August 15th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 30 and 31 from the Old Testament. But now they mock me, those who are younger than I, whose fathers I disdain too much to put with my sheepdogs. Moreover, the strength of their hands, what use was it to me? Men whose strength had perished, gaunt with want and hunger, they would gnaw the parched land in former time desolate and waste. By the brush they would gather herbs from the salt marshes, and the root of the broom tree was their food. They were banished from the community, people shouted at them, like they would shout at thieves, so that they had to live in the dry stream beds, in the holes of the ground, and among the rocks. They brayed like animals among the bushes and were huddled together under the nettles, sons of senseless and nameless people. They were driven out of the land with whips. And now I have become their taunt song. I have become a byword among them. They detest me and maintain their distance. They do not hesitate to spit in my face because God has untied my tent cord and afflicted me. People throw off all restraint in my presence. On my right, the young rabble rise up. They drive me from place to place and build up siege ramps against me. They destroy my path. They succeed in destroying me without anyone assisting them. They come in as through a wide breach. Amid the crash, they come rolling in. Terrors are turned loose on me. They drive away my honor like the wind, and like a cloud, my deliverance has passed away. And now my soul pours itself out within me. Days of suffering take hold of me. Night pierces my bones. My gnawing pains never cease. With great power, God grasps my clothing. He binds me like the collar of my tunic. He has flung me into the mud, and I have come to resemble dust and ashes. I cry out to you, but you do not answer me. I stand up, and you only look at me. You have become cruel to me with the strength of your hand. You attack me. You pick me up on the wind and make me ride on it. You toss me about in the storm. I know that you are bringing me to death, to the meeting place for all the living. Surely one does not stretch out his hand against a broken man when he cries for help in his distress. Have I not wept for the unfortunate? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? But when I hoped for good, trouble came. When I expected light, then darkness came. My heart is in turmoil unceasingly. The days of my affliction confront me. I go about blackened but not by the sun. In the assembly I stand up and cry for help. I have become a brother to jackals and a companion of ostriches. My skin is turned dark on me. My body is hot with fever. My harp is used for mourning and my flute for the sound of weeping. I made a covenant with my eyes. How then could I entertain thoughts against a virgin? What then would be one's lot from God above, one's heritage from the Almighty on high? Is it not misfortune for the unjust and disaster for those who work iniquity? Does he not see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked in falsehood, and if my foot has hastened to deceit, let him weigh me with honest scales, then God will discover my integrity. If my footsteps have strayed from the way, if my heart has gone after my eyes, or if anything has defiled my hands, then let me sow and let another eat, and let my crops be uprooted. If my heart has been enticed by a woman, and I have lain in wait at my neighbor's door, Then let my wife turn the millstone for another man, and may other men have sexual relations with her. For I would have committed a shameful act, an iniquity, to be judged. For it is a fire that devours even to destruction, and it would uproot all my harvest. If I have disregarded the right of my male servants, or my female servants when they disputed with me, then what will I do when God confronts me in judgment? When he intervenes, how will I respond to him? Did not the one who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one form us in the womb? If I have refused to give the poor what they desired, or caused the eyes of the widow to fail, if I ate my morsel of bread myself and did not share any of it with orphans, but from my youth I raised the orphan like a father, and from my mother's womb I guided the widow, if I have seen anyone about to perish for lack of clothing, or a poor man without a coat, whose heart did not bless me, as he warmed himself with the fleece of my sheep. If I have raised my hand to vote against the orphan when I saw my support in the court, then let my arm fall from the shoulder, let my arm be broken off at the socket. 
for the calamity from God was a terror to me, and by reason of his majesty I was powerless. If I have put my confidence in gold or said to pure gold, you are my security. If I have rejoiced because of the extent of my wealth or because of the great wealth my hand had gained, if I looked at the sun when it was shining and the moon advancing as a precious thing, so that my heart was secretly enticed and my hand threw them a kiss from my mouth, then this also would be iniquity to be judged, for I would have been false to God above. If I have rejoiced over the misfortune of my enemy or exulted because calamity found him, I have not even permitted my mouth to sin by asking for his life through a curse. If the members of my household have never said, if only there were someone who has not been satisfied from Job's meat. But no stranger had to spend the night outside, for I opened my doors to the traveler. If I have conquered my transgressions as men do by hiding iniquity in my heart, because I was terrified of the great multitude and the contempt of families terrified me so that I remained silent and would not go outdoors. If only I had someone to hear me. Here is my signature. Let the Almighty answer me. If only I had an indictment that my accuser had written. Surely I would wear it proudly on my shoulder. I would bind it on me like a crown. I would give him an accounting of my steps like a prince. I would approach him. If my land cried out against me and all its furrows wept together, if I have eaten its produce without pain or caused the death of its owners, then let thorns sprout up in place of wheat and in place of barley weeds. The words of Job are ended. God, if only I could be so sure of my righteousness as Job is. Because I mess up all the time. I mess up every day and I, I don't know how, how people like Paul and in this case Job are so perfect. But I thank you for the examples in the Bible of the people that aren't perfect. Um, that seem a little bit more like me who try as I may and as much as I love you I still screw up. And it's interesting because some things in my life I can clearly see are consequences of bad choices very easy to connect the dots on those. Um, I made a bad choice. Here's the consequence. I made a bad choice. Here's the consequence. Um, and I thank you for that discipline. There's other things in my life that I'm hurt or pained or angry about. And in searching my heart, very much the lament that Job is having, I don't know what I did to deserve that. And thankfully, as Christians, we don't need to think that way because we know we know more about you than Job did. He's very confused. He's wanting you to come back to him, um, although you never left him. He's wanting to give an account so that even though you're all, your ways are always right, it's almost like he wants to prove himself to you. And we know in a Christian lifestyle that you sent your son to the cross to die an incredibly painful death um, and took on all of the sins of the world from the past, currently, and from the future to provide us forgiveness for the things we did. Now, that doesn't mean, and you're really clear in the Bible, that there still won't be consequences, but we know a little bit more than Job does, um, or Job did at that point. But I still struggle with that, interestingly enough. I think, what am I not doing right? What, what am I missing? And a lot of times, it is something that I'm missing. Uh, again, I'm not perfect like Job. I can search my heart and not see something. But I always pray at those times, God, I'm not seeing anything. But if you are, please search my heart. Find whatever is dead on my tree that needs to be cut off and cut it off. I know it'll be painful, but I will be obedient. Just show me what I need to do. And you have very much always been faithful to showing me when I prayed that prayer. And I saw another prayer this morning that is kind of similar to that. I thought was just amazing. It said, Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I will thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me as in all your creatures and I'll ask nothing else, my Lord. So kind of the other side of that prayer, please search me, please show me anything that I have done. Not in the way that Job's asking, because he's asking rhetorically. He thinks he has done absolutely nothing wrong, and perhaps he hasn't. Um, but for me, 
First and foremost, search my heart, God. Show me the things that I am missing. Cleanse me of anything that is offending to you or offending to your people or offending in my walk. And then the other side, and let me be thankful for all the circumstances, all the teaching and the amazing path that you've given me. And that path a lot of times is filled with confusion <laughs> for me. But hear this amazing prayer, I will be thankful. I will accept. It is the only thing I want. It is the only thing that I will ask for, is for your will to be done in my life, God. So God, today I, I start the day with that prayer. Please search my heart. Some things I know and we're working on those things. Other things I am blind to. Show me those things, allow me to work on them, allow me to be better so that I can reflect your glory more. And then God, thank you for everything that you, that you have put me through, pulled me through, helped me through, that whatever situation I'm in, I will rejoice because I know your hand is on it. And I simply come to you and ask that your will be done in my life and only your will, not my will, not anybody else's will. There's nobody else I want to listen to but you, God. And I will be thankful and accept everything that you give me, whether it be discipline and consequences, uh, those valleys where I'm learning really painful lessons of my own choosing, or on those days where I am just on the top of the world because I get to worship you all day long and the amazingness of everything that you have done in my life, around my life, and in this world. God, I submit my life to you. I put it at your feet. I, I humbly ask that you just do whatever it is that you need to do with it for your plans, for your glory, and for your will. In your son's name I pray, amen.